it's easy enough to say that we need a, a moral and ethical uh, consideration or view of climate change and its impacts. Uh, but how do we go about it? Where do we even begin? And what can it uh, build on? Uh, we will see some examples of what the history of, let's say, spirituality and environmentalism have been. It is not new that people have realized the negative impacts of humans on the environment. It's just that the climate change is rapidly accelerating and has become global and it's affecting a large part of the global south. So this is a new rapid pace evolution that has to be dealt with, but can it be built on what is uh, already been going on and what are the things that have been happening? For, uh, for example, uh, if you say climate change is an ethical problem, uh, ethics will be uh, not the same for everybody, right? It depends on cultural contexts, philosophical uh, mores built into different uh, uh, countries. Even within the country, for example, within the U.S., you see stark differences between the so-called blue states and red states when it comes to climate change and how to deal with it. And even thinking about whether climate change is happening and who's responsible it, responsible for it and whether it's a serious concern and so on as we saw in the previous chapters. Uh, even the religious world views matter. We talked a little bit about uh, dominion versus stewardship. Uh, revisiting that in the context context of science and religion. So climate change, uh, all the understanding is now very much a natural science problem, but we are talking about solution and requiring these technological and social transformations and what are the religion, the religious ethical dimensions of it. So this uh, chapter argues that a new alliance is needed between science and religion. Obviously, there has always been a conflict between science and religion, which can make this alliance uh, quite difficult and challenging to come about, even if the intention is the same in terms of wanting to solve the climate change problem. How can we break through the scientific complexity to the moral insight that gives rise to social and political change? So it's not always easy to go from scientific understanding to making them into moral insights that bring about social transformations and political change. Schools of theology have not included ecological issues and environmental ethics into curricula. So far they have very much focused on traditional theology Theology is not really same as religious studies, as the author points out. Theology is about understanding God, the concept of God within each religion, and not about how the religions evolved and what their code of conducts are and uh, so on. Okay, uh, going back to uh, uh, Pope Francis's Laudato Si, uh, the encyclical, papal encyclical, encyclical, reading one of the quotes, uh, a true ecological approach always becomes a social approach. A true ecological approach always becomes a social approach. So you are directly going from science into social science, which includes theology, religion, ecology, right? It must integrate questions of justice in debates on the environment so as to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor, okay? Mother Nature is giving us signals that uh, we are changing things. Can we say we are hurting Mother Nature? Mother Nature is crying for help. That's what the, the concept is here. Uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama uh, wrote also, our only home, a climate appeal to the world. So this is obviously beginning to get higher and higher in the concepts of uh, the role of religion uh, under climate change in a warming world. The ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew of the Eastern Orthodox Christian Church has also led the way in highlighting the sacredness of creation and in hosting religion, science and environment symposia, he focused on water. He speaks of the degradation of nature as crimes against creation. 
crimes against creation. So he's converting directly uh, climate change into uh, crimes against God, creation. Okay, so that's a powerful message. And an ecological sin. Sin is a religious concept that also appeals uh, or has an impact on the perception of the uh, followers. Hence these words matter when they come from religious authorities. And then there are uh, non-religious authorities who made uh, huge differences in the perception of environment and stewardship of environment, uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, the uh, environmental protection and so on. Uh, one such big name in the US of course is John Muir who had advocated environmental preservation in part because he saw nature as sacred. So he converted his sense of spirituality about the environment into a movement called the Sierra Club uh, which is the most enduring and influential grassroots environmental organization in the United States. Uh, they say we amplify the power of over 3.8 million members and supporters to defend everyone's right to a healthy world. A right, that's the key word, a right to a healthy world. Of course now uh, right, there's a little bit of controversy going on because there is uh, some uh, evidence that John Muir had made some racial statements uh, so the Sierra Club has to deal with this legacy. Uh, of course the times were different but nonetheless you cannot excuse the racism uh, so you have to somehow extract the good and deal with the darkness of the person uh, involved in uh, creating this good movement for environmental protection. Sierra Club has been uh, really powerful and uh, effective in doing environmental work but now they have to deal with the uh, racial thought process of the creator of the entity. Something to deal with again.